Hey everyone, today's topic, LinkedIn and how to optimize it during your job search. Hey everyone, my name is Junaid and in today's video, LinkedIn and how to optimize it for your job search. I'm going to split up the video into these sections. Feel free to skip around to whatever you feel is the most relevant to you. It's currently 10.35 p.m. I got home from work about an hour and a half ago. So apologies for the absolutely exhausted eyes, but let's dive straight into the video. So to begin with, is LinkedIn even important to land a job? Do you even need it? Yes, yes you do. In today's day, digital networking is more important than ever before. And even if you don't end up finding your job on LinkedIn, it serves as an incredible source of information and point of reference. It also doesn't do anything to hurt your chances of a landing job. It actually increases the chances of a recruiter coming across your profile. So personally, I'd recommend everybody have a LinkedIn profile and refine and polish it to a degree that you'd be happy with because it can only do you good. I treat my LinkedIn as a sales pitch where I'm the product. For example, if you were a car salesman, you'd highlight the best points about the car and why it's a perfect fit for your customer. Same thing with LinkedIn. You highlight the best points about you in relation to your industry and explain why you'd be a perfect fit for a company. Your LinkedIn profile is your sales pitch to any potential recruiters, hiring managers, and employers. Starting off with your profile picture, you need to have one. Profiles without a profile picture can come across as inactive and won't stand out in the LinkedIn search. A profile picture also makes you immediately more personable because anybody who comes across your profile can put a face to a name, some keys to a good profile picture. You don't need a professional camera. These days, a phone camera is fine to begin with. Make the distinction that this is LinkedIn, not Instagram or Snapchat. So you want to go a slightly more professional route, which is why I'd advise against heavy filters or selfies. Look straight into the camera, look open and approachable and try to keep your background relatively clean because the focus of the picture should be on you and your face, not on the background. If you want to take your profile picture up a notch, wear the clothes worn by professionals in your industry, a suit and tie, a button up shirt, etc. Back to profile tips, put your work experience, any courses you've studied, any projects you've worked on, even if you were the group leader of a small project in university or college. There is a caveat to this, which is to not list any and everything. Look back into experiences where you were able to demonstrate skills that are highly valued within your industry. Give a short description about the task that you came across, what skills you used to tackle the problem and the outcome you achieved from your process. Now, two things to include within work experience that employers love to see are statistics where relevant within your work experience and if possible, a screenshot or a piece of work that you did during your experience. Both of these build validity to your experience and let recruiters and employers know that you know what you're talking about. Reaching out to professionals is one of the most useful things I've done when I was job hunting. And LinkedIn is perfect for this because you can reach out to so many people within your industry. Ty Lopez talks about the importance of having a mentor, a mentor. And that's what I set out to do with LinkedIn to see how I could best emulate their journey, learn from their blueprint and see what information I could glean from them. Now, this process began with me being as specific as possible with my messages and requests. And I remember when I was reaching out to anyone, I would assume that they wouldn't have time to reply to generic or inauthentic conversation. This approach really helped me narrow down my messages and make them specific for that person. If you can be specific and straightforward, it will really increase the chances of you getting a reply. You want to open with why you're reaching out, acknowledge their accomplishments, show that you have looked into their profile and done some background research, go on to a bit about you and your experience, and then delve into what advice you're looking for. If in your message you can link back to a common acquaintance, that's even better because it builds familiarity or converse if you attended an event and the person you're reaching out to was a speaker at the event, mention the event because again, that builds that familiarity and they're more likely to reply. Here's a template example of how I would reach out to someone. Hi, blank. We had a brief discussion at the Masters in Finance event regarding the LSE Masters application process after you'd presented on the 7th of May. I wanted to say thanks for spending the time to answer our questions and providing a deeper insight into the process. Insert name of common acquaintance. Mentioned you had really helped them with the GMAT part of the application process and I would really appreciate some advice on how to bump my quantitative section average 
from 690 to 740 plus. Appreciate the time. It was great to hear from someone in your position at the event. Regards, Junaid. I've introduced myself if I've met them beforehand or if we have a common acquaintance. Those have both been mentioned. I show that I've done research into their profile and I get straight to the point with a specific question. This has given me this. I mean, this has given me so much valuable information. People have given me their study plans, insights into application processes, interview advice, exceptionally specific interview advice. Reaching out to people on LinkedIn done the right way is almost a cheat code. I've literally got an exact interview questions from analysts for their firms. LinkedIn isn't only a professional social media platform, it also has a job search function. A survey found that 93% of recruiters use LinkedIn as part of their recruitment search process. I personally like LinkedIn's job search because a recruiter or employer doesn't have to sift through your resume. You can immediately make an impression on them with your profile that you've created, as well as this on the LinkedIn job search, I found that there were more specialized roles posted than available on traditional job boards. Now, the advice given on most careers websites, uh, Prospects, Bright Network and others is to research job postings and identify the keywords used within the job description. If you're able to include these keywords in your profile, that'll immediately make you more searchable and visible on LinkedIn. So as an example, an investment analyst job profile would have keywords such as financial modeling, discounted cash flow valuations, forecasting analysis and etc. For data analysis this could look like data visualization, data manipulation, statistical programming languages etc. So While I was editing this video just now I thought it'd be useful to give you a live demo of how I would do this for keywords and skills so check this out. All right so here we are on LinkedIn what we're going to do we're going to go up to the jobs section I'm going to click into that now I'm going to search for data analyst. Now I'm going to filter by company. Let's say Pricewaterhouse. Let's see what roles Pricewaterhouse are posting. I'm going to scroll down. Oh, data and insights analyst. Okay. I'm going to scroll down to the section where it says, there we go. I'm going to comb through this. Look at the skills and keywords that show up the most. So immediately I can already see all three X Power BI, Tableau, SQL and Python, strong analytical skills and strong communication skills. So I've looked at their ideal candidate and I'm going to build upon my skills based on what they're looking for. This way you cover all your bases and you're more likely to show up in their search and more likely to go further within the application process. That was it for this little interjection. Now back to the video. So keywords, use optimized keywords on your profile within the header of your profile and the description to make your profile stand out as much as possible. By personalize your profile, I mean to add everything that makes you stand out as a potential candidate, whether that be personal interests, courses you've studied, sports you've played, even if they're seemingly irrelevant on my profile. Some I've included are basketball and videography. They don't have any direct correlation. There's no specific parallel with those and my work or being an analyst, but they do help to create a more rounded potential candidate. You want a recruiter to be able to see you for more than just your academic achievements and more as a whole person. So in summary, LinkedIn is very, very useful. In my personal opinion, LinkedIn is very useful. I think it's very underutilized. And I think that the place where you get the most bang for your buck with LinkedIn is in the details. So things like your profile picture, that's the first port of call for anyone who comes across your profile. Keywords, do research into optimized keywords beforehand and include them within your profile. Use the LinkedIn job search to research optimized keywords for your industry and include them within your profile. Most importantly, reach out to people. I can't say this enough, reach out to people. This is something that's really helped me. The advice you will get from people who have gone through the process, who have laid out the blueprint that you can follow is unmatched. The bank of information you can create by reaching out to people to refer back to as a point of information is huge. That's about it for this video. I hope that was useful. So this is how I use LinkedIn and I can guarantee if you integrate these processes and pieces of advice into your workflow when looking for a job, it will help you land a job in no time at all. Other than that, do leave a comment down below to let me know what kind of content you prefer. The last video, I really do appreciate the momentum we achieved with that video. And the comments are really useful because it helps me to decide where to drive my content creation, where I could be the most helpful. So I was thinking I would 
upload a video about a day in the life of a data analyst working from home next. If that's something you'd like to see, let me know. If there's another video title that comes to mind, also let me know. And I will see you guys in the next one.